Welcome to our joint Christmas carol service with St Peter's, St George's and St Lawrence's. It's lovely to welcome you. We begin with the time of lighting our Advent candle. Our first candle was for the patriarchs, those like Abraham who went out into the desert. Our second candle was for the prophets, those who spoke God's word to God's people. Our third candle was for John the Baptist, the one who called out in the desert, make way for the Lord. And our final candle is for Mary, the mother of the Lord, who said yes to God. Let us pray. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, merciful and gentle. To you be praise and glory forever. Your light has shone in our darkened world through the childbearing of blessed Mary. Grant that we who have seen your glory may daily be renewed in your image and prepared like her for the coming of your Son, who is the Lord and Saviour of all. Blessed be God for ever. Amen.
A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. What are we to make of this Christmas story? We tell it every year. The wise men, the shepherds, the angels, Mary and Joseph, and always, always a little donkey. We ask our children to act out the story. We sing about the story. But if we're honest, there are plenty of other stories we could act out that we could sing about. What on earth are we to make of this story, this true story with all its strangeness? And why focus on it again in the middle of a pandemic? This year has been a time of testing, a time of struggle, a time of waiting. This year has been a time when a virus has arrived on our shores and has infected enough of the population that not once but twice we've been forced to lock down at home. Stay at home save lives. This mantra has become part of our national psyche and so we have locked ourselves down so that we might not get infected. Lockdown and waiting, that might sum up 2020. But waiting for what? Waiting for whom? Well, we've been waiting for a saviour waiting for a saviour to discover a vaccine, waiting for a saviour, someone smart enough, to come up with a way to give us an injection so that we might not get sick and so that we can get back on with our lives. We can't save ourselves. Most of us don't have the brains or the knowledge and certainly we don't have the scientific equipment 
to solve this problem. So we lock down and we wait. We wait in the darkness of this pandemic for our light to shine, for an announcement to be made and for hope to be declared. And really, in a nutshell, that is the Christmas story. We're told in the scriptures very early on a truth which we see on the news, a truth which we see in our communities and a truth which we see in ourselves that each of us is already sick with a virus which is not originally of our own making. The human family of which each of us is a part is sick with a virus which no human being has ever successfully resisted. The story of the fall of Adam and Eve might be told in a way which reminds us of fairy stories, but that story cuts to the heart and exposes the truth which the mess of our lives testify to. There is another pandemic, a pandemic which has existed from the very beginning and which has claimed the lives of every single human being and will claim our lives too. And so, as we have done with coronavirus, so we do with this pandemic of sin. We lock down and we wait. Each generation has been aware of the darkness and each generation has looked for the light. Each generation has searched for a savior, someone with the capacity to deal with a virus we cannot deal with ourselves. And that first Christmas, the announcement was made that a savior was on his way. That a savior was coming who could deal with a pandemic of sin and inject in us the antidote which would, in the long term, make us safe. The announcement went like this. The angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. That first Christmas, God came from heaven to the helpless human race, to give us the chance to be rescued, to give us the chance to be inoculated, to give us the chance to get back to God. The baby in the crib was a saviour who came to save us from a worldwide virus which, we could, which would, if, if we could, keep us locked down, separated from God forever. That first Christmas, the light really did shine in the darkness. And it came not as an impressive military leader or as a politician with her speeches or even as a leading businessman with his carefully crafted strategies. No, the light, the saviour came as a little baby, a small, tiny and seemingly helpless little baby. The baby came as the saviour to save his people from their sins. This evening we sing about that light, a tiny, fragile speck of light, a baby who came to save us and to offer us a vaccine from death itself. The true story of Christmas is that God did not abandon us to the darkness. No, he comes as a fragile and seemingly helpless baby to rescue us and offer us a way to be safe. Our job is to accept the gift, to unwrap the present. And we do this by trusting him, by asking for his forgiveness and giving him command over our lives. So amongst all the excitement of Christmas, the jumpers, the crackers and the turkey, amongst the busyness and the piles of presents, let us take a moment to remember why Christmas is such wonderfully good news and Jesus is such a great gift. To you is born this day in the city of David, a saviour who is the Messiah, the Lord. Amen and Merry Christmas.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Father, at Christmas your Son, our Saviour, was born in human flesh. Renew your Church as the body of Christ. And we pray particularly for the ministry and the mission of the Churches together here in Chorley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, there was no room for your Son in the inn. Protect with your love those who have no home and all who live in poverty. We pray for the work of our partner organisations here in this town, for the Living Waters Food Bank, for Chorley Help the Homeless, for the work of Christians Against Poverty and all those who seek to serve this community in many different ways, seen and unseen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, your Christ came as a light, shining in the darkness. Bring comfort and healing to all who suffer in the sadness of our world all who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. We pray for all those for whom Christmas is a time of difficulty and darkness, for those who have been recently bereaved, for those who are self-isolating and are separated from loved ones this Christmas. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Strangers found the Holy Family and saw the baby lying in the manger. Bless our homes and all whom we love. We pray for all those with whom our lives are closely linked and give thanks for the blessing of love and friendship. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Heaven is come down to earth, and earth is raised to heaven. Hold in your hand, O Lord, all who have passed through death in the hope of your coming kingdom. Grant them the peace which passes all understanding in the joy and light of eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, in this holy season, angels and shepherds worshipped at the manger throne. Receive the worship we offer in fellowship with Mary, Peter, George, Lawrence, and all the saints. Through him who is your word made flesh, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your feet. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and to obey his will. And Christ, who by his incarnation gather into one all things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>